This is Tyler Young with Go Engineer Tech Support. Today I'd like to show you a little video about virtual parts, how you can insert them, how you can use them, and kind of some of the reasons people use them. So in this assembly, I just have a simple assembly put together a box with a lid on it, and this lid is a virtual part. You can tell it's a virtual part because of these brackets that go around the part name. So that's kind of your first indicator that you have a virtual part. Now, how do you insert a virtual part or how do you make a virtual part? There's several ways to do that. The quickest and easiest way to make a virtual part is just by going to your insert components drop down and say new part. So right now I'm going to just click randomly here in my part and that has inserted a virtual part. Along with that, it put me in my edit part mode, so I'm actually editing this part. I'm going to exit that right now. So here you can see I have another virtual part, part two. So those are virtual parts. That's the quickest way that you can insert these virtual parts. These virtual parts are saved internal to the assembly, meaning there are no files that are associated with them. Let me show you where the assembly is saved here in my little um, folder. So here I have my top-down assembly, my box part, but I have these two virtual parts, part one, part two, and they don't show up in here, and that's one of the reasons people use virtual parts. Another way that you can identify virtual parts is by the name of it. So it's called a part, the part name, a caret, and then the assembly name. So wherever a virtual part is saved, it's always going to have the assembly name after it. So that's kind of one of your indications that it's a virtual part. So there's a couple ways to save these virtual parts as an actual part file. So the qu one way is by just saving your assembly. And the first time you save your assembly, it's going to ask you to save your part. And if I click Save, it's going to oh, first I gotta rebuild. Then it's going to ask me, do I want to continue to save this part internally or virtually, or do I want to save it externally or as an actual file? I'm just going to say yes, yeah, save internally right now, that's fine. The other way you can save these externally is if you right click on the part file and say save part in external file. That gives you this little save as window, and you get an option to save the file in the same folder as the assembly or you can save them in a specific path. You can just tell it where you want to save it. So I'm just going to say Save as Assembly and click OK. Now let's look at our Windows Explorer again. And now you can see Part 2 is this part. So there's a couple things that have changed. One, the part's now saved here in the folder. Two, the part name has changed. It's no longer in brackets. And there's not the caret with the assembly name afterwards. So that now means that this is a regular file that you would normally think of using. Um, you can then take a regular file and make it a virtual part. You can right click on this and you can say um, make virtual. So we do that. It's just going to tell us we're going to break the link to that external file. We say OK. And now it is a virtual part again. So it had to create a copy of part two because we already had a part two. So that's one way that you can just take these parts, make them virtual, make them um, an actual part file, and that's just a quick and easy thing you can do. There is an option that controls this. So if you come to your Tools Options, under the Assemblies Options, there's this checkbox here, Save New Components to External Files. So by default it's cleared, but if I check that, and then click OK. Now if I come and insert a new part again, it's going to tell me, hey, you need to save this part file. So I'm going to say, yeah, save as part 3. And then it comes back to my assembly and lets me place it. So if I place it here, it again takes me in edit part mode. You can see again if I exit that. But now you see part 3 is not a virtual part. It's an actual part file. And again, I can look here. And now I have part 2 and part 3. Um, so that's one option that you can do to prevent virtual parts from being created. So those are kind of some of the different ways that you can work with virtual parts. You can insert them, you can make them virtual, you can always work with actual part files. 
there are some reasons people use one over the other. Virtual parts can be used to uh, clean up the folder structure so you don't end up with lots of extra files in your folders if you don't need them. Uh, virtual parts are easy to rename. You can just rename them in the design tree. If you just double click it here, you can rename the part file. And there's no reference to an external file, so you don't need to worry about references. And p as part of that, you don't need to worry about the file references. So if you have an assembly file with virtual parts, if you need to send that to a customer or a vendor or someone, you can just send the assembly file. You don't need to worry about all the part files if they are saved virtually or internally to the assembly. So those are some of the reasons people might use these virtual parts. Really, it's up to you what you would like to choose to work with. Um, sometimes a combination of them is a great way to kind of work. So this has been Tyler Young with Go Engineer. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Mm -hmm.